Hey folks, great to have you here. Um, just prepared a little bit for my next stream and this time I will be building the uh, famous uh, Duck Viper version 2 kit. Um, I haven't uh, done all my preparations this time and I'll be starting with the stabilizers. It's a very low count of stabilizers since I will be building this kit in a, um, let's just say, happy hacking like layout. Not only do most um, MX based happy hacking um, layouts um, have a seven unit space bar instead of the, the original six unit space bar, but I will also um, add the additional ISO key so that um, I don't have to uh, totally get used to a different layout. Um, so I'll be using happy hacking layout in general with the ANSI um, enter, but I will be using the short left shift from uh, from the uh, ISO layout. This will give me the additional key that I need um, to get all my all my uh, German um, keycaps in. Putting a couple of stamps. Fortunately. Um, it will go very nicely. Uh, just give me a second. This stabilizer wire doesn't look so nice. I will be lubing a couple of points here. Make sure that it's um, it's not giving me any f any fraction. Didn't buy any extra um, stabilizers. Oh, where's my where's my super loop? Oh. Oh. Here we go. Just um, <laughs> let's put a drop here and another one here, and we should be fine. The sliders are looped anyway, so um, they won't be giving us any problems. Uh, oh yeah, I need to grab a couple of old screws. Sorry pal, it's um, PH1 heads. We, uh, we talked about this earlier today in chat, um, what kind of screw heads actually came with these stabilizers and it's the ones that I bought are all PH1 heads, but I also have some Torx here, but um, I won't be using them. Uh, one specialty about duck boards. Um, let me grab a bit of foam. I don't want to. I don't want to apply any pressure on the um, SMD components on the bottom here. Okay. Let's take a moment and enjoy this. What a beautifully laid out board. Uh, PCB. <laughs> it's just uh, very nice. Um, I have taken some. Um, some high quality pictures of this PCB and the whole kit before assembly because I wanted to share them in the desk uh, authority wiki. <coughs> um, I've, um, I have forgotten to take uh, nice pictures of the kit components so many times I wanted to get it right this time. So uh, one specialty of these duck kits is that he has a little um, line of layer and indicator leds up here and they are like on a little, a little um, extension of the PCB here and we are going to see where this leads in just a second because the case is going to go over these LEDs and we will have even though we have a very slim frame here we will still have these LEDs inside the frame. It's, um, <laughs> That's Korean style madness. Very nice. Okay, let's remove this. Even though I won't be using these LEDs much, I still want to solder them in. Um, I'm going to be using RGB LEDs. Red, green, blue. And I will be using uh, blue LEDs for the indicator lights. Um, 
Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm so bad at getting the orientation right. Gotta grab my little cheat sheet. <laughs> do, 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 do. It, this doesn't help at all. <sighs> yeah. This is a very badly prepared stream this time. I think I have more cheat sheets. Obviously not. I'll just Google it. You have to give me a second. Yeah, like all we have is these little uh, these little circles with a little indent. And oh yeah, there we have it. the The dented side is is a negative, and the round side is positive. Uh, positives always the long leg, so they go in this way. Today I learned. Yeah, I'm starting with the LEDs because they are much easier to de uh, to solder while the PCB is still unpopulated. And otherwise, you're going to have to have problem uh, getting them aligned against the um, the PCB if you already have the switches in. Um, I'll be doing this without without much uh, venting. Okay, just solder one leg first, reheat it. Oh, come on. And then um, align it, align the, the lead, let it, let it cool. Okay, there we go. Okay, I hope that works. Let me check if these um, if the leads work fine with the, with the frame. <laughs> it looks like they can actually they actually don't need to be that tightly inside just gonna see in there I can move them up a little bit. Should be our indicator lights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot to solder the second legs. Let's get those in as well. These uh, tiny solder joints need 
so so little solder very cute okay looks nice what do you think mm -hmm. yeah I can live with that let's give it another shot that was very smart again once more um, like Oh yeah, they fit in. <laughs> Tight fit, but that's what I like. So Okay. And the other lights uh, I have to check. I used to have some nuts around here. Oh wait, no. <laughs> I put them in the box. The box that's labeled leads. Here we go. Yeah, they should be good. I hope they have resistors soldered in. Sometimes these LEDs are missing the resistors because people can pick their own resistors. But I don't think, I don't see any unpopulated resistors here. So I will just assume that they already got their resistors. Um, for the layer LEDs, I'm going to be using. Mm, mm, blue. <laughs> And same, same procedure. Oh, this side, long leg. <laughs> the programmability of these stuck boards is of course very nice and um, you can um, you can use these uh, additional indicator lights here as a layer indicators um, giving you an idea of um, which layer you're currently working on. Hmm. I think, oh, I think I don't need to lift these leads any further. They're already pretty far up from their um, from the construction they have. Let's see if they fit in here. Yep, they fit in right nicely. So um, I'm not going to put any more artistry in there and just solder the second leg. Okay, next step is the stabilizers. 
Uh, we have two, two stabilizers here on this board that we're going to use. It's um, the, um, the ANSI Enter and of course the um, um, the spacebar seven units um, standard for um, standard for MX based um, happy hacking uh, clone layouts. I've read somewhere about a, a dude who shortened um, some pads on his board when um, using screw-in stabilizers. I'm not sure which pads he me meant. He's probably talking about these these lead pads here. Yeah, I won't be using leads, so I hope this is not going to be a problem. Um, otherwise, I might have to use some uh, some shrink tube. Oh, it's also very close here. <laughs> Cute. There's a couple of caps down here for the uh, for the uh, microcontroller. But we're not getting close to any of them. Okay, let's take a look at the plate. Where is it? Thank you. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's the. Oh, nice, nice ISO support here. Um, I'm going to definitely be building my um, my Duck Eagle with um, ISO support. Let's get started. Gonna, oh boy. <laughs> it's, um, it's a lot of time. Give me a second, I gotta fix something here. Okay, it looks good. Okay. So this should be the the classic happy hacking layout is exactly sixty keys. That's where. That's why it's the sixty percent. Um, I'm using an ISO build, so I have one additional key. So it's going to be a sixty-one keys build, and I put in one other spare key here for this one, so that it's going to be um, sufficient. One thing I forgot. Give me a second. This keyboard deserves a nice little white Nixie. Right in the feelings. Good, let's start with the corner switches. I have given all these switches a very, very close and strong uh, push. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah. Well, this is like, unlike the Liku PCBs, which I am a great fanboy of. Um, the duck PCBs, they lack any kind of supporting solder mask um, to help you place the switches. This is why I'm a little, um, I'm a little more um, 
uncertain with the with the bottom row here. So I'm going to be using Oh, that's how it's supposed to go, yeah. Let's give it another try. Ah. ah, okay, here we go. Yeah, I was aligning it incorrectly. Uh, the plate is um is great quality, no doubt. Yeah, down here, down here the magic is happening with the ANSI and ISO. Like this is the ISO um, shift cluster. It's the actual part that matters a lot more than the stupid enter part. I don't give much about this part here, but I, I need this part right to um, to get my additional switch. I need them switches. <laughs> Let me grab a couple of mods. Let me gra grab a little space bar here. Yeah, so it's going to be like this. Oh, yeah, makes sense. So we're going to be moving one switch here. Whoa. A little bent leg. And we're going to have another switch here. Okay, this should make sense now. Have another look. Putting this one down here. This one down here. Yeah. See, I'm not that stupid. I only do it on Lico PCBs where I feel like the legends on the PCB are good enough to do this um, free floating. Um, but um, you still have to be able to read properly, which I'm sometimes not. Okay. Put this one in here, push it nice and close, and finish this PCB. I used to be a, a great 60% uh, fanatic, like the first, let's say, uh, unconventional keyboard I got was actually a um, <coughs> a poker poker three and before that I only had like let's say these normal TKL or full size keyboards poker was like the first um, like layout that required you to use layers or function layers at least and it was a it was a great step forward for me, getting deeper into the, 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 the whole idea of having kit keyboards and custom keyboards and programmable keyboards. So I'm very happy about this. I still think the, the poker is a great, say, um, <laughs> entry drug into um, the world of um, programmable keyboards just because you, you, you got to use a function layer on the poker. Uh, you, you absolutely have to because you don't have arrows, arrow keys, and you kind of you kind of do need arrow keys. So um, it's, a, it's a great starter. Um, it's a great way to get into it. Um, it's readily available in tons, tons of variants, like never before seen variants. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a decent build quality. Um, it's you can usually get it just off stock like in, in Europe it's widely sold through through uh, Amazon um, you can grab one off mass drop if you want to save a couple of bucks and live in the US 
or you can just get a used one. I mean, it's not, it's not like like anyone's ever gonna get close to um, to um, the the, ra the rating or like the lifetime of a cherry switch. Um, actually, I had a I had a point uh, where I wanted to where where I was considering building a little test setup with like a little bit of home electronics skills and uh, and uh, resources to wear out, like intentionally wear out a cherry switch. So I was thinking about a little motor that was swinging um, a wheel um, and the wheel would be um, pushing up and down on the cherry switch like zoom, 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 zoom. Um, and I, I was considering different like um, frequencies at which the, the switch could be could be actuated and uh, I was considering the amount of days it would take of uh, permanent 24 hour runtime to achieve this and uh, I realized that I probably wouldn't find a motor that would be running long enough continuously um, like in the hobby hobby uh, area uh, hobby electronics area um, I didn't find any motors that were good enough to actually do this. It has to be. It would have to be running for a couple of um, several months, I, th I think, unless you want to go like into real high frequencies. And in order for the motor to, like in order to get like a a good reproducibility, I'd have to run it at a at a set speed. And if I want to speed control the motor, I have to. Uh, Put a motor driver in, and that those things they produce a lot of heat, a lot of waste, waste uh, energy. Yeah, I couldn't uh, I couldn't put it together. They last for a long time, even if you keep hitting the same switch, F5, like for example, <laughs> or whatever you, lol and other online gaming guys use. Okay, I'm gonna be um, soldering the solid leg again, solid leg first. And then upgrade. Uh, sorry, then push it in under pressure. Pressure release and uh, get a tight fit. Come on. So the diffusers. This is the top. I'm gonna put it somewhere safe. I don't want to hear the noise of m metal hitting metal tonight. This would be very disappointing for me, as you can all imagine. Let me just move my. Uh, got to move my screen a little bit Let me grab my, uh, my little exhaust fan it's a it's a super crappy simple little fan but it works you'd be surprised oh, let's do it this way it's always it's always super difficult for me to solder switches this way if you go column by column and you move it closer to the fan, it's actually a great idea because you, you just keep right in front of the fan. But the problem is you have, you're having such a hard time following the columns here. Like, no, you have a hard time following the rows here because it's all staggered. And this is how I start missing um, soldering joints. So I rather do it this way and um, have a much easier time getting all the joints right. Great thermal mass here. I feel like these joints take a little longer to heat up than uh, other kits. It's not a big deal, I think. Or maybe the, uh, the, the soldering iron was still on standby because right now we're at a a pretty uh, normal pace. Oh no, we have great thermal mass here. Oh, now we have it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. Like we have a we have a big ground plate here, 
a big ground plane you see all these solid red areas are copper ground planes and uh, they will um, increase the thermal mass of the joint and um, they will give you very um, inconsistent uh, heat up times for the joints like some joints uh, if they are far away from a from a from the ground plane will heat up quickly and some joints will uh, give you a hard time heating up so uh, have patience don't start to go crazy and um, and wiggle around on the on the on the pad last thing you want to do is lift the pad just give it a little time Heat is going to be transferred. So this, is, this was a fast one. This is a real pain when you're desoldering keyboards. Um, because um, if you have um, these huge ground planes and huge thermal mass um, sometimes have issues getting like all the solder out of the joint and uh, this can be really annoying especially when you're desoldering high high quality high class boards like for example the um, I was desoldering a couple of GMK boards the Vatex oh my god they were giving me a hard time They they were they they've got like huge beasts of PCBs. Um, it's uh, almost custom quality um, what they put into their PCBs. Um, if you like, plenty of um, people have disordered um, ski the, the ski data boards, and um, they are also pretty massive when it comes to thermal mass because they are big double sided PCBs. And um, just stay, stay patient. Just stay patient. Um, temperature just needs a moment to transfer. Did this one go on? Oh yeah, there we go. I don't have too much to ramble about today. I was thinking about doing a couple of 
like videos on, on, on some given subject like for example looking at stabilizers oh yeah i think i mentioned this before i always have great plans <laughs> i wanted to do a video on stabilizers for example and some basic basic modding ideas for stabilizers different kinds of stabilizers especially the ones you find in vintage boards um, and um, different kind of modern stabilizers different kind of cherry stabilizers especially the ones that i use like stabilizers that are less than uh, two three bucks a piece mostly one buck a piece is uh, all that i'm ever going to pay for a stabilizer um, more light um, yeah, I think some just some some little basics. So, just always make sure whenever I talk about something, whenever I explain something, whenever you look at how I th I do things, I'm not an expert. Um, there's people who've got far more experience than me, and uh, they're just too shy to go on camera, even with their hands. Right, Scotty. So, um, I'm just to do it on camera and once you're on camera people start thinking that you you've got some special abilities or something um a little magic involved being on camera even if it's just crappy youtube yeah just never stop questioning the stuff i say and do always make up your own mind uh, if you have any suggestions on how to improve my work here um let me know in the comments if you have your own assembly streams or videos i'm highly interested in them i always look for something some new ideas some tricks and uh, hints to get stuff working to make this job a little easier so keep them coming or maybe a little bit a bit of talk about this keyboard kit here. <laughs> I mean, most of the people who watch this stream probably know everything there is to know about this keyboard. It's probably one of the most sought after keyboard kits um, recently. Uh, this is one of the big uh, Korean custom names, duck keyboards, along with. Um, Life Zone and um, Liku and um, Bok and, um, and the TX keyboards, Kin25. Um, he's one of the, uh, the, the big current um, makers who are still uh, doing Korean customs, like proper real Korean customs. Um, and uh, his keyboards are usually limited. <laughs> he's doing um, He's got a couple of designs, and um, every time a new design comes out, um, there's a, a certain guy named Elton uh, on GeekHack, and he runs the uh, the group buy, and the group buy <laughs> usually sells out in minutes. And um, I'm not exaggerating here or something. Um, the only way I got this keyboard kit is because I got up early in the morning because my kids woke me up, and. Um, I was checking my emails, I saw a notification about the group by going live and I think I was already, like this wasn't even announced so this was just randomly coming up, it's just the way GeekHack works, group by, uh, you submit a group by for um, approval and um, approval can take uh, an hour to uh, three days or a week to get approved and suddenly the group buy is live uh, usually not even the the organizer of the group buy knows ahead at what time his group buy might, will go live so this is how it happened it, um, it just randomly went live <laughs> and I just accidentally happened to be awake so I got my order in <laughs> and I think I was already order I was order 70 something of a hundred 
so I was already pretty close to the cutoff. And um, yeah, this all this happened pr uh, pretty quickly. All the cutoffs and um, orders were closed. So I think this um, this round of Eagle Viper sold out in two or three hours, and it was around um, I would say forty fifty thousand dollars worth of keyboards. Um, and it, this wasn't even announced. So the latest um, group buy of Duck Keyboards, the, the Lightsaver version 3, um, it was announced ahead when it would be go live so people could set their clocks. The form went live and I think it sold out in 90 seconds. And um, since it's a bit larger keyboard, the sales volume was around $50,000. So there's a lot of money in this hobby. And um, I love my little Viper. This is just probably one of the nicest pieces in my collection. Definitely the nicest 60%. So yeah, what a, what a lot of group by runners these days do on uh, Geek Hack to counter this problem with the uh, random uh, point time uh, of approval of their group buys, especially because things happened like um, some group buys went live on Reddit and Geek Hack at the same time, and um, by the time the the group buy was approved on Geek Hack, it already sold out on Reddit. And this kind of weakens GeekHack as a as the predominant platform for um, custom keyboard group buys. So what a lot of um, designers do these days is um, they submit the the group buy thread uh, long ahead, long before they want to open orders. Once it gets approved, they will uh, announce the um, the release time and uh, date. Um, in the thread, usually a couple of days ahead, and um, then they will put the order form live right when um, when the order when that time is reached, so everybody gets a fair chance. And I think this greatly reduces the amount of um, of drama you get in these threads, because especially the people who buy and sell these keyboard kits for a profit. For them it's really a lot of money involved, uh, also for those people who want to keep them for, for themselves, obviously, because the aftermarket price is always going to be terrible. Oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm, no, let's, let's just forget that part, about I'm not judging there. Um, I can understand if you get upset when you just miss this by a couple of minutes or hours, or just completely because um, it happens so randomly. Yeah, it's a um, yeah, it's, it's a general problem with limited keyboard kits. Um, on the other hand, I have no idea how many keyboards kits um, the Duck could sell if he didn't limit them. I don't know if he could sell 200, 300, 400. It would be a logistical nightmare. But and I'm kind of kind of thinking he's making money here. You could really be making money. <laughs> yeah, I think he wants to. He wants his keyboard to be uh, collectibles, to a certain degree, of course. Um, so he limits them. So I think it's a. It's one way to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Not the kind of person who's trying to. Uh, to talk in absolutes, so uh, I'm just saying this is one way of handling stuff. He's making very nice keyboards, it's just a shame uh, they're not easily available like um, some other keyboards from, uh, from Korea.
so far, apart from the lead orientation uh, trouble early on. This is a fa fairly smooth um, build stream, I have to say. I hope you're all happy that I'm not wasting too much of your time. And for all those people skipping through and not listening to all my rambling and every s not examining every single solder joint I make, um, you are just a bunch of leeches, and you should um, you should um, feel bad. Yeah. You should feel very bad. Um, What do you say? I bet. I bet. I bet I did it well the first time. I have this feeling that I didn't miss a joint. And I bet all the pot smokers are uh, having a great time talking about joints all the time. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I think shortening that one pad really killed something. <laughs> okay, let's try something. the mouse here we go okay yeah so it seems that actually shortening this one pad around here where was it here did um, um, did give us a little problem um, because there's supposed to be a lead in there and the lead's limiting the uh, um, it's limiting the current flow we didn't have it in there and short and pad, bad news. What we need is a tiny bit of shrink wrap. And a, a tiny bit of thingy bob here. Never without. Oh yeah, I should have done that before. Always make sure your stabilizers work nicely. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, mouse is still here. It's good news, I, I suppose.
Oh, it's installing something. Seems like uh, something's happening. <laughs> it's taken an awful long time to install this. Trying something else, trying a different uh, cable here. Oh yeah, I think I messed up that one USB port here. It's much better. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, let's try this. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> you were supposed to see this. Let's um, have a look here. Okay, here we go. Um, do this. Always make sure you test all your switches nicely. Oh no! I missed one. Oh my! Damn, I am such a failure. Damn, I missed one. Okay. Well, today I learned. Never um, celebrate too early. Let's um, move this one back. Let's turn this one on. Let's grab this one. And what did I say? The eye. Oh, here we go. This one. Okay. Okay, looks good. Let's try the next step. Now I am going to fix the plate in the top half of the case with these nice little screws. And what do you see? They are tor no they are they're hex actually. They're hex screws. That's cute. Hex is nice hex is probably the most the nicest screw heads to look at. Torx is the real winner. Okay, let's see. Oh, what a coincidence. Oh, let me uh, magnetize that. Oh, there's um, some extra screws for a potential uh, screw in weight. One uh, thing to note about these duck keyboards is they all have a preparation for screw in weights, but they usually never come with any. So um, it's uh, usually a, another group buy where you can get a nice um, screw in weight. Mm-hmm. 
this is already very good looking. Okay, now comes another nice part. These are some extra um, parts, um, acrylic parts, I think. They have special spacers to allow uh, screw-in stabilizers to be um, to be used, and they were run um, in a little uh, special group by on GeekHack by a couple of dudes. Sorry, I can't come up with the names. I'm not a I'm not a real GeekHack regular. Wow, but they are very nice. I'm very happy. Look at those. Let's see. They come right here. Here you can see. There's a little, uh, there's a little drill, drilling here to um, allow for um, um, the screw-in stabilizer to be there. Okay. Here's the bottom part. Oh wait. move out of uh, out of the camera area <laughs> come on Um, next uh, duck build I am going to have these uh, stripped in the preparation to keep my eyes open going to keep my eyes out for um, a weight group by oh no these aren't screws for the weight they're screws for the top uh, for the front here oh no which one goes where? Oh, I guess the long. Oh yeah, sure. The long ones go through the through the uh, diffusers, and the short ones go straight into the uh, metal. Okay, play the same game here. Second one here. Okay. Let's try something. Are there a different length for these screws as well? Oh, 
Looks good, don't you see? <laughs> okay, maybe I've, I've been doing this a little too, too quick. There's no, there's no top side and, and bottom side, I don't think. Let's try this, this one first. Get it. Oh wait, sister, right? <laughs> There's different screw heads, like different sized hex heads. Uh, let's look here. So probably a 2.5 then, yeah. very much <laughs> oh my god yeah I was I wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a bright moment oh, this one's to the other one
Holy moly. What have I been doing here? Uh, I'm going to screw this all up. Okay, let's get the diffuser right first. Oh, that's totally messed up. I didn't think this was going to get this exciting. Um, but there we go. If you don't think this is exciting, um, you obviously still have a life. Boring. working with two screwdrivers at the same time. Feels like um, a good brunch with my parents. <laughs> Come in. comes the best part about duck keyboards the feet I don't know where he gets these little stickers and if I ever find out I'm going to buy all of them And the keycap and I really sincerely hope this is gonna look good these are some very fine probably my nicest um, happy hacking uh, specialty keycaps and I hope they look good with a black case is it flipped is it not flipped I will never know I better just um, punch myself in the face um, just to be sure that uh, if it's flipped, I uh, got what I deserve. <laughs> oh yeah, tip actuating. 
very smart. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. The German caps on a funny layout. <laughs> yeah, that came as a surprise. Putting the Y down there. That's uh, that's dream layout for you guys. I like it, but what do I know? Let's give it a little test ride. Actually typing. <laughs> I am actually typing. Not. <laughs> yeah, that was um, an awful lot of fun. I think this is um, this is a really nice keyboard. Um, <laughs> as always, I came across some small troubles. <laughs> I hope you uh, you forgive me and you uh, enjoyed them a little bit. Maybe I did. <laughs> It's always uh, fun to come across new problems every time you do a build and just never get it right. Um, let's see if this one still works. <laughs> I think we completely knocked out the docking station's USB port. So yeah, that's um, me sacrificing my hard-earned hardware for you. Um, I hope you had a great time. Thanks very much for tuning in and yeah, if you've got any remarks, any other things you would like to let me know please give me a comment yeah I usually reply to my comments I I think that's fun yeah thanks very much have a great time <laughs>